my friends, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. I have a very large haul for you. These are all my books I purchased or received for free in July. There's a lot here. I'm going to be doing a lot of leaning to put things in the bed next to me because it's a lot. So where did I get these from? Um, some are from Paperback Swap. Some are from, like at least half of them are from Book Outlet. They had a sale and I'm a sucker and have no shame. Um, some of them are from friends and some are from clients. I think that's pretty much covers where everything is from. So let's get cracking because <laughs> it's a lot here. <sighs> okay, so this first one is a box set and I have owned this individual books at a time and I've had two separate box sets of this series previously and have eventually gotten rid of them because it, the font is too small. They were mass markets, though I do like the covers a lot. I do liked, wow, I did like the covers a lot. And when I think of this series, I think of these covers first because that's what I saw growing up. Um, but I promised myself if I ever found the series in a trade paperback version with the specific cover, I would buy it, no questions asked. And I found it. So what is this? This is the Anne of Green Gables series. Um, Virago Modern's Classics Edition. Look at these and then I will show you. I'm not taking all these out. So here are all the covers. Plus a glare, sorry. Beautiful, right? So, finally have this. I have never read these before. I did watch the show in the 80s growing up because I was very much a PBS kid in the 80s. Um, so, very glad to have those. Very, very glad. Um, I will start with the two stacks in front of me. So, seeing this book is what made me have to buy things at the book outlet. Mostly because I've been looking for a copy for years and have not been able to find it. This was published originally in 2017. And I won't do this for all the books either, but this is Haim by Annalie, Annalena, excuse me, is it McAfee? McAfee? McPhee? I don't know. Um, set in Scotland. I've always wanted to read this. I love the cover design. I like the font. I like everything about it. Um, don't really know what it's about. Don't really care. Don't remember what it's about. I should say I did know it one time. <laughs> I don't anymore. So this is the thing that made me buy all the stuff at Book Outlet. So there's Haim. And I have not counted these. I'm kind of afraid to, but whatever. Um, this one, The Secrets of Paper and Ink by Lindsay Harrell. Never heard of this before. Like the cover a lot. And it's fiction. Set. Okay, so it seems to be set in Cornwall. Uh, Sophia is a counselor and is trying to get away from her life, like take a break. So she's renting a flat above a bookstore in Cornwall and then meets the owner and I'm sure they fall in love or something. But they also find a notebook from a governess who lived in Cornwall more than 150 years before. Sophia learns that Emily harbored a secret passion for becoming an authoress as well as a deep love for her childhood friend Edward, whose station she dared not dream to touch. So, sounds good to me. Next up is a nonfiction, Devices and Desires, Bess of Hardwick and the Building of Elizabethan England by Kate Hubbard. This assumingly does what it says in the tin. Um, one of many mysteries, the start to a series, IQ by Joe, is it Ide, Ide, I'd, I don't know, but um, I've wanted to read this since it started. This is set um, in LA, I think. High school dropout. If you've got a problem, Isaiah will take care of it. His rate's adjustable to your income or lack thereof. So yeah, like a private investigator series. It's supposed to be very good. Oh, again, apologies for all the leaning out of frame, but I gotta, I gotta put this stuff somewhere. This one I've been trying to find for years and have not been able to. This is Riding the Elephant, a memoir of altercations, humiliations, hallucinations, and observations by Craig Ferguson. I love Craig Ferguson. Um, no, he's not perfect. Nobody is, but I really like him. I sincerely miss his talk show. It was so good. I think about him and Jeff probably more than I should, but glad to have this. Uh, this one is one that I read in college. 
thought that I liked it, but I don't remember much about it. This has gotten confused with other books set um, on the same time, not set, written around the same time. This is 18th century, I believe. The Expedition of Humphrey Clinker by Tobias Smollett. It's, um, in my brain, it's sort of like, oh my gosh, I, I totally blanked. But it reminds me of this, um, what is that? Not Scarlet Pimpernel, but I don't know. It's a great video. Laura, you're doing such a good job. Um, anyways, so I wanted to reread this and it was extremely cheap or free. This one, I'm very happy to find it. And I never saw this cover before either. This is Passing by Nella Larson, a classic about a woman, um, African-American in 1920s Harlem who I think can pass as white. She has been passing as a white woman married to a racist man who does not know her true identity. So it's Claire who is passing as white and then her friend Irene who is African-American. I mean, I, you've seen this around everywhere. I'm looking forward to finally reading this um, and yeah, happy to have a copy. This one I was so shocked to read too. It is large print, but I don't care because I'm old and it's nice to me to read. Look at this, oh, lovely. This is The Heiress by Molly Greeley. Um, this is about the imagined life of Anne de Bourgh the daughter? Is she the daughter? Yes, she's the daughter of the most esteemed Lady Catherine de Berg, de Berg from um, Pride and Prejudice, of which I still have not read, I know. Um, <laughs> and um, this imagines her life. So Anne is supposed, we see her very briefly, but she is supposed to marry Mr. Darcy. Like, since they were infants, they were essentially betrothed to each other until Darcy goes and screws it up by falling for Elizabeth Bennet, and who wouldn't? So we hear about Anne's life, about her addiction to opium, struggling with things, and finding out if she's trying to figure out for herself if she really is as sick as she's meant to be, she has all these problems that everyone tells her she has, or if they've just gotten her hooked on laudanum. So yeah, it should be good. And I feel like I need to say I will be reading Pride and Prejudice before I read that book. Okay, now, so for those of you who have been here for a little over a year, you know that last year I tried to read my very first Brandon Sanderson, and I DNF'd it. Not because I thought it was bad or anything else, but because I just, my brain wasn't there. It was just the wrong time. And I think also it was too much too soon, like jumping in the deep end and then staying underwater. Do you know what I mean? That's how it felt. So, um, what is the first book, in, what is the book called? People are yelling at me. It's the Oathbringer series. Whatever the first one is, I don't remember. However, this was on Book Outlet, and I thought, I know that I'm going to get back to this. Oh, here, The Way of Kings. Bingo, there we go. Um, and this is new, and it was there. So I got a copy of Rhythm of War, this big baby. I've been feeling like giving that series a shot again. Really, I've been feeling like reading Mistborn, which is... Um, in my TBR jar, it was recommended to me by Ramsey at Rajathan and Leslie at the Nerdy Narrative um, to start there instead of starting with The Way of Kings. So I have the fourth book in that series waiting for me. Happy to have it. Happy to be giving it a shot again. Okay. This one is a Britta Bowler, Heidi at My Reading Life, Doris at Aldi Books. Um, blame it on them. Wendy Williams is The Language of Butterflies. This beautiful cover is very addicting too. Maybe you want to read it right away, but it's all about butterflies and things. How thieves, hoarders, scientists, and other obsessives unlock the secret of the world's favorite insect. Should be excellent. I believe they all really enjoy it. And this book, I did not own a physical copy of, just audio, so I'm happy to have an actual copy of A Keeper by Graham Norton. This is his first fiction book, and I think it's sort of a mystery. Set in Ireland, so happy to have this. Plus then, my mom can also borrow it because she doesn't listen to audiobooks. Okay, we have a standalone contemporary romance, spoiler alert, by Olivia Dade. Um, something to do with fan fiction, I believe, or RPGs. Not sure, should be good. I found out about this and this author initially from Cousin at Always Doing. Um, so when this was on there, I think I got this for free too. So, you know, happy to have that. I have books one and two out of what is so far a four book series. Um, but I did read the first one and enjoyed it and then I forgot about it. 
and saw these there and I thought, oh yeah, I will get this. So this is by Molly McRae, Plaid and Plagiarism, Start to the Highland Bookshop Mystery Series. Um, I know I liked this one. Um, I didn't love it, but I liked it. I don't think this is her first book either, but I thought this was good. I'm, I always forget to check this out for my mom from the library because I think she would really like it too. So I have this and then I have the third book, which I think came out last year or the year before. So it's pretty recent. This is Thistles and Thieves. So now I just need to get book two and four eventually. I'm not in a rush. Okay, speaking of series <laughs> that are incomplete. I hadn't heard of this before. Um, I think this is just four books long. So I have books three and four. Um, the main character here, the investigator in this mystery series, is Agatha Christie. And I like that. So this is Death in a Desert Land, set in Baghdad in 1928. And I Saw Him Die, um, set in, ooh, Scotland on the Isle of Skye. Yes. Okay, so I have these two. So now I'll have to check out one and two from my library. But happy to do that too. Okay my book of the month club book that i picked this month is 56 days by katherine ryan howard this is a thinner thriller um no one even knew they were together now one of them is dead that's all i know seriously okay and then i have this complete series of five books that one of my clients gave me as a tip from her massage which I am fine with. <laughs> um, this is by Leanne Hearn, or Leanne Hearn. Oh, this is the wrong way, Laura. Oh, here we go. So this is the Tales of the Otori series. Um, the first book is Across the Nightingale Floor. Um, there is, uh, let's see, some kind of floor uh, that was installed that surrounds where the emperor sleeps um, and any kind of weight on it it creaks and it will alert guards and anyone else that there's someone trying to come in and assassinate the emperor i keep saying emperor i hope that's correct um but there is a woman i believe him no boy um who can somehow he's figured out a way to walk very lightly so he has no weight so people are trying to task him with going to kill the emperor. So here's book number one, Across an Anangale Floor. Book number two, Grass for His Pillow. Three, Brilliance of the Moon. Four, The Harsh Cry of the Heron. And the last book, Heaven's Net is Wide. I should say Leanne Hearn is a pseudonym for uh, a female writer. I forget what her real name is. I apologize. Um, and she has written another series too that I own the first book of. Also set in Japan. I will try and insert an image if I can remember to. Haha. Uh -huh. um, but I've had that one for a long time. That one book sitting out here. So happy to have more. And um, my client, I should say, has read the series twice and she loved it. She said it was so freaking good she couldn't believe it. Um, but she wouldn't reread it again. So Happy to have them. All right, let's pull the last three stacks over. And, okay. Are you still with me? I hope so. So this stack is all different kinds of Harlequin romances. These are all from Paperback Swap um, that just cost me credits. So I have some Nocturne books, His Forgotten Forever by Michelle Hoff. If you watch in the dark, something vampire-y, I don't know. We have a Intimate Moments by Silhouette, Deadly Reunion, um, Rowan Marriage to a Bounty Hunter, he left her and then now he comes back as he's trying to arrest somebody and this guy, some killer or whatever, has set her in his sights next. So there's that. I have, ooh, yes. Harlequin Gothic. These were out in the 80s and I'm trying to slowly collect them. I'm not trying to be a weirdo about it like I normally would and go full hog and get everything at once. But this is Return to Shadow Creek by Helen B. Hicks. She returned to the place of her birth only to discover a sinister web lurking in wait for her. 
Okay, these are book one and two in the Mission Family series by Tracy Montoya. There is House of Secrets and Next of Kin. This is um, involving a family, I believe, who are part of the Witness Protection Program. And the person who is stalking them finds out where they are. So they have to try and escape with people. I don't know. It sounded good at the time. Um, this I got for free. It's part of the Men in Uniform series, which is a loose series, I think. A Surprise Inheritance by Charlotte Douglas. Um, Welcome to Millionaire Montana, where one lucky lady has just received a surprise inheritance. Something to do with a library, too. That's what made me request it. And then this is another Nocturne book, Dragon's Den by Denise Lynn. Obviously about dragons. His estranged wife, he and his estranged wife, must unite to prevent the evil force from unleashing a supreme reign of terror. So, what are those? Okay. Another one from Paperback Swap, Irish Girls About Town. Um, I really like Maeve Binchy's writing and I'm slowly collecting her books. This is one I didn't own yet. So it's a collection of short stories from uh, 13, 14, 15 different Irish writers. So should be good. Um, this was a freebie from my friend Shell. Digital Fortress by Dan Brown, Scott and Nell, I know. Um, <laughs> but I had this at one point, got rid of it, and I decided, you know what, I do wanna read this. because. Like it or not, he's a very readable author. It's not high literature, it's not trying to be, but it's a darn good read from everything I've read of his previously. So happy to have this. Um, I did have another, well, that's, that's fine, it's underneath stuff. Okay, I have two more books by an author I've read previously and really enjoyed. These are both standalones. So this is A Dangerous Duet by Karen Auden. The book I read of hers previously was Lady in the Smoke set in the Victorian era. Um, she, this lady is on a train by herself heading, I think, from London towards her home where she's from. And there is a big train accident. Um, people, are, like lots of dying, lots of like people, like, explosions, it was horrible. Um, but she somehow survives. She was very badly injured, but she survives. And she helps a um, doctor who was on the train. So while she's trying to help him. She's a pretty independent person. Uh, they find out that there was a bunch of gold on the train. That's why it was sabotaged and exploded. So then they're also trying to investigate that as well. I really liked that book. It was pretty pacey, page turnery, really good. So happy to have two more by this author. Big ramble, sorry. A Dangerous Duet, set in London, 1975. 19-year-old Nell Hallam lives in a modest corner of Mayfair with her brother Matthew, an inspector at Scotland Yard. She's a musician tries to earn money herself by playing piano at the Octavian, a popular music hall. She has to disguise herself as a man and she stumbles upon a dead body. There's that one. And then there is A Trace of Deceit, also by Karen Auden. Um, oh, this is the first or second in that series. This must be, these are listed as standalones, but Matthew Hallam is also a character in this. So, I don't know something about art student and a theft or something not sure should be good oh yeah um i ordered some stuff from um blackwells because i have no shame so i have what white people can do next by emma debiri very thin stop the denial stop the false equivalencies interrogate whiteness interrogate capitalism denounce the white savior abandon guilt it's talking about racial injustice in different ways so hopefully this will be educational for Super white me. Even though I am pretty liberal, pretty I'm extremely liberal. Who am I kidding? Um, then I have this nonfiction, which was everywhere in the UK. If you watch a British booktuber at all, I'm sure you saw this at some point. I am an island by Tamsin Kalidas. Tamsin um, arrives in a remote island in the Scottish Hebrides. It feels like coming home. So she and her husband leave London and their jobs to move to this island for is it one year? A while. Um, so when they get there, the locals are not welcoming. They are very distrusting. Her marriage breaks down. He leaves and she gets ill. She gets really sick by herself. So she's stuck on this island very far from anyone who knows her and people are hostile and whatever. So I think this had some controversy around it. I don't know. I tried to listen to that kind of stuff. It just sounds like an interesting book and it's nonfiction. So here for it. Another one I've been trying to find um, used somewhere, anywhere, 
in the States and have been unable to, is Invisible Women, um, Exposing Data Bias in a World Designed for Men by Carolyn Criado Perez. This was part of the um, Book Two Prize, was it last year or the year before? Um, and I have always wanted to read it. Everyone who has read it has said it has been very good or good with a few caveats, but still, I am looking forward to reading this one for sure, like everything. Do a drinking game where you say how much I'm looking forward to this and you take a shot every time I say it. You're going to be blot blotto, blitzed out of your mind by now. This one I've shown before and other things. Um, I was supposed to read this as part of a weekend long group read over on Litzy. Um, and did not get the book until after the weekend was over, like the day after it ended. I got it. So I still would like to read Orkney by Amy Sackville. Um, it's um, set on Orkney. Surprise, surprise. So it's about a couple that gets married. She is younger, he is a little older. And as they are on, back on Orkney, Orkney for their honeymoon, he's noticing that she is not quite the person that he thought she was. She seems to be more ethereal somehow or something. I don't know. So here for that. This one Danny gave to me. She thought I would like it, and I think she is right. Um, this is an eco biography, A Bushel's Worth by K. Ann Short. Mm, how for her century old from her century old farm, K. Ann Short shows how small scale community supported agriculture borrows lessons from the past to nurture sustainable food sheds for the future. In this lush memoir, she offers an ecological alternative to industrialized agriculture, I can talk, and reunites with her grandmother's farming traditions as she harvests organic veg, raises chickens, preserves both fruit and fertile land. Rooted where the Rocky Mountain meets the prairie, Short's love story celebrates our connection to soil and one's community commitment in keeping a farm a farm. So not local to me, local to whomever purchased this. It's not somewhere clearly near the Rockies, but it sounds really good. And... It's an autographed copy. Yes, please. Speaking of suckers and for the stuff set in Scotland and um, the Highlands, and I have no shame. It's The Summer Job by Lizzie Dent. Um, this is new this summer, published. Um, the main character, whose name is Birdie. Her best friend is a winophile. No, not winophile. What is a person who like knows a lot about wine and they like go and study stuff, that word which is escaping me and is not on the back. What the heck anyways. Um, her friend gets a position doing that wine thing, <laughs> this place in the Highlands, a resort, and um, she decides she's not gonna go, but it's too late to really tell them. And Birdie is fed up with her life. She is like in her early 40s, um, single, sick of it. So she goes and pretends to be her best friend at this Scottish resort um, and tries not to get caught she doesn't know anything about wine, and then of course ends up falling for someone. So this just sounds like something I would want to do, even though when confronted with stuff in real life, I am not a good liar, but I would try it. Heck yes. Okay, pivoting a little bit, not too much though. The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. This is contemporary romance, and I really like reading their books. They're very readable. They always make me chuckle and laugh. A little dirty, but you know, not as dirty as our first series because that was very dirty, but. Looking forward to reading this one. Of course, Laura, why else would you own it? And then I have books seven and eight in the Something of London series, Rivers of London series. So seven is Lies Sleeping and eight is False Value. No, I have not read this series yet. I have not started. But yes, now I do own all of the books. Why am I like this? Don't know. I have book number two, two in a series, A Strange Scottish Shore by Juliana Gray. Um, again, set in Scotland, 1906. Haywood and True Love is the, are the two people that are investigating. I think, um, who is, Maximilian Haywood is a new duke and uh, inherits this castle. And I think Pulse's friend, I think her name is Emmeline True Love who's sort of, I don't know, it's some kind of like private investigation, something, I don't know. Um, but number two, I will look for number one again at the library. And fun fact I looked up when I saw this, Juliana Gray is a pseudonym for Beatrice Williams. So something for you guys out there. Getting there, four books left only. Okay, this was also from Danny. 
she really splurged and spent four dollars on this for me so you know it's important this is jurassic park by michael Crichton. i'm very excited to be reading this at some point coming up soon you will see an announcement video for that but very happy to have this this is a series i did not look up which number it is but i have wanted to try for quite a long time i do like the author's writing even despite her early life and her past and everything i feel like she has done her time literally and figuratively um, but I really like her writing. So this is Anne Perry's A Christmas Inheritance. No, Gathering. Excuse me. Christmas Gathering. Um, these are all it's a series of novellas set in the Victorian era um, in England. Ladies Vespasia. That's her name, Vespasia. Um, so I don't think you have to read these in order, I, but I think it can help. Again, I don't know what number this is, but every year around Christmas, we have almost an entire shelf at my local library. And... November to December there are barely any copies in like they just go like wildfire so this year I'm hoping to actually read this one in December and that way I can guarantee that I have a copy available okay the witches of St. Petersburg is next beautiful cover by Imogen Edwards Jones um, this is historical fiction I believe there's a little magic in here too um as daughters of the impoverished king of Montenegro, Milizia and Stana must fulfill their duty to their father and leave their beloved home for St. Petersburg to be married into senior positions in the Romanov court. Initially outcasts, they are shunned by the aristocracy for their provincial ways and for dabbling in the occult. So they try to fall, be, befriend, excuse me, the Tsarina Alexandra and um, make their position a little more secure in court. But something happens that seems to be related to the occult, I think, and they start to um, get involved with stuff like it says, brimming with black magic, sex, power, and betrayal. It's an exquisite novel, haunting images, sumptuous details, dying days, Romanov era. Yes, please. Yes, please. And the very last book. Oh boy. Um, never heard of this before, but the cover got me. And. Um, this blurb by Deanna Rayburn is what really did it. A deliciously atmospheric read that causes the hair on the back of the neck to stand up. Read it with all the lights on. This is The Woman in the Mirror by Rebecca James. So this is giving me, you know, Rebecca vibes, obviously, nicely gothic. have never heard of it before, but it sounds really good to me and set in 1947. So, yeah. Okay, whew. That's a long book haul. If you have stayed through this whole thing, my gosh, thank you so much. Uh, this is a lot of books. I do not know where I'm going to put them. That's not the point about owning books. Um, but I do feel a larger on haul coming in my future. I need to. I need to. And while everything sounds interesting to me, and obviously if the book came into my house at one point, I did really want to read it. Um, I need to set some limits for myself. And... Yeah, currently none of these books have a place to go. So we'll see how that goes, shall we? I don't know. Anyway, thanks for staying in there with me. Um, if you guys have heard of any of these, you think I should try and prioritize them, um, I will, I'll make an exception. If you want to write in the bot in the comments below what you think, uh, what you want to recommend to me of these books, I will add them to my August TBR bowl and hopefully they will come up. It'd be nice if something that I just hauled recently was like a read it pretty quickly kind of a thing. That never happens. Um, but yeah, um, hope you guys have enjoyed this very long, very rambly haul here. And hopefully my August haul will not be as bad as this because it's real bad. Okay, um, I will talk to you all very soon. Um, take care of yourselves and stay safe. And yeah, chat again soon. Bye.